up? It's me, Catherine, and today I am finally doing a video that I've been talking about doing for a while, and it's happening right now. You're witnessing it. History. I guess you're in the room where it happened. Here it is, finally, an updated casting types video. I'm going to talk about casting types for stage and for screen. That's right, I'm going to talk about film, TV, commercial, casting, all the fun stuff. Theater Thursday special, my friends. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. <laughs> my name's so, so weird. <laughs> Hi, I'm Catherine. Welcome to my space of the internet my little corner of the internet. I put out a new theater-related video on every Theater Thursday, plus I do bonus uploads throughout the week. If you haven't already and you'd like to, go ahead and hit subscribe, that way you get notified for all future videos. And by doing so, you become part of the Theater Thursday family. First we take over Broadway, and then the world. If you want to follow me on social media, I am Kath underscore Steel on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and I love talking to and hanging out with the Theater Thursday fam. You guys already know that, but if you want to hang out, those are great places to do so. Let's talk about this super in depth. I've already done another video on this, which I'll link down below if you do want to check it out, but this one is going to be comprehensive, a lot more in depth. So let's jump into it. So what is a casting type? A casting type is basically a way to categorize an actor into what they can play. Now, a lot of times when people hear this, they kind of freak out. They don't want to be put into a box because it limits the amount of jobs you can get and roles that you can play. But here's the thing. You can play outside of your type. Your type can be very broad. And I'll talk about playing outside of your type just a little later on and how to change your type and stuff like that. But just know that just because you might fit into one certain category of a type doesn't mean that you can't fit into multiple categories. And also, when you meet somebody, you automatically get put into a box, whether you like it or not. And I know that that kind of sucks, but it's true. You might think, oh, this person looks and sounds attractive. Ooh, I meant intelligent. Freudian slip there, you guys. So back to what is a casting type. I kind of broke it down into this formula. A casting type is what you can do plus what you look like. There's an old saying that goes, a casting type is not what you are, it's what you can play. So just because you're playing someone who's awkward and nerdy on stage or in a film doesn't mean that you yourself are awkward and nerdy. So basically you need to kind of remove yourself from yourself, if that makes sense. Don't take anything too personally. The second that you're able to step outside of yourself and objectively look and say, okay, what do I look like? What can I do? And maybe what do I need to change about myself so that I am the perfect package? The better. The best thing to do is honestly address yourself. And then one more quick thing that I gotta say. There's something that I read one time and it kind of stuck with me. I think that flowers are beautiful. And I love Christmas tree lights. I think Christmas tree lights are beautiful. Now here's the thing. I just said that both flowers are beautiful and Christmas tree lights are beautiful. Correct. They are both beautiful. They look nothing alike. Just because you don't look or sound like someone that you really admire or look up to doesn't mean that you aren't amazing and perfect in your own special way. Okay, so let's go into this. What you can do. So I put that kind of broad on purpose because I'm going to talk about both theater and screen acting. So what you can do is what you can play. What are you good at acting? For me, I'm really good at playing the damsel in distress. I'm really good at playing someone's girlfriend. I'm really good at playing the bad guy. We are great. However, I'm really not good at playing sexy. I just, I just can't do it. I get very uncomfortable, but that's fine because I wouldn't really define myself as a sexy type, but that's also probably partially because I can't play sexy. It's kind of like a what came first, chicken or the egg? And in this metaphor, am I a chicken and is the egg the ability to be sexy. I don't know where I'm going with this metaphor, but uh, what are you best able to play? Additionally, if you're talking about musical theater, like I often do, you need to take your voice type into account. Tenors are usually romantic leads or male ingenues. Mezzo belters are usually the popular girl, like Elle Woods or Heather or Heather. Or Heather. I did a whole video on singing tips and voice types and stuff like that, so I'll link that down below if you haven't seen it already. So yeah, that's part one. Part two is 
a lot more. And that's what you look like. If you're auditioning for theater, your general overall look definitely still does have an impact on what you get cast as. I know a lot of people who are like, um, you're like 20 feet away from the closest person, so it doesn't even matter what you look like. Okay, first off, false. Second off, who are you and how did you get in here? The door was open. Your look matters in theater because people can still see you. Secondly, to even get called into an audition, a casting director needs to look at your headshot and be like, yeah, I'll take that person. So if your headshot doesn't match what they have in mind for that character, you're probably not gonna get an audition. For TV and film, your looks matter a lot more. Your face is going to be blown up on a 20 inch screen or a 60 inch screen or a movie screen or an outdoor movie screen. I don't know, the possibilities are endless. So your look matters a lot more. And I'm not saying that you necessarily have to be prettier to be on TV or film. I'm just saying you need to match the casting director's brain image of that character a lot more closely. Let's talk about alternative looks really quick. If you have a really cool alternative look if your hair is like pastel or if you have a bunch of piercings or tattoos that's totally cool that's awesome as long as it works with your type or if you're okay with the type that it kind of puts you in how to figure out your casting type this is one of the biggest questions that I get asked so 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 often so let's talk about it a really popular exercise in a lot of acting classes is that people will go around the room and they'll say what the other person looks like 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 you'll look at a guy and you'll say, oh, does he look more like a hero, a villain, or a victim? But I feel like that whole thing doesn't work for a number of reasons. One, you're in a group setting, it's potentially embarrassing. You don't wanna tell someone, hey, you look like the nerd who gets beat up at the beginning of the movie, even though it's probably true and that would help them in their career, but it's not very nice. So a lot of people end up not really telling the truth during the exercise or they don't know what they're talking about. And then also you can look at anyone and they could be a hero, they could be a villain, and they could be a victim. Because I think that way is kind of outdated, here's my best way to kind of start figuring out your type. Which actors do you look like? And just be honest with yourself. For example, I know that I don't look like Blake Lively. And it's not a good thing and it's not a bad thing, except Ryan Reynolds will probably never love me. But it's just something that I'm aware of. Think about what celebrities your friends tell you you look like. From there, see what TV shows they're on or what shows they do. Same thing goes for your theater casting type. I'll beat this is a little bit looser than your screen casting type. Not by much, but like a little bit, a little wiggle room. If you're auditioning for your high school play or any kind of youth theater production, your type is going to get totally skewed. Don't stress about it if in youth theater you keep getting cast as the mom and you're confused about your type because you only play moms, but you're only 13. Another question I get asked a lot is, can you play roles outside of your type? And the answer is yes, of course you can. And by that, I mean slightly adjust your own type so that you also fit into another type. It's usually pretty hard to change or expand upon what you already do in terms of what you can act and what you can sing. But it's pretty easy to change your appearance. Adjust your makeup. Adjust what you wear. Adjust your rep material. Use different headshots. So technically it's not your main type, but it's still you. I can't play a 40 year old male NBA player. It's not gonna happen. But I can be this person, or this person, or this person. So think about what you can do with a full outfit change, a full rep change, by that I mean doing the appropriate material for your audition in terms of monologue, songs, dance, whatever. So yeah, that's my overview on casting types. So if you like this video or found it helpful at all, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. If you haven't already and you'd like to, go ahead and hit subscribe. Like I said, I put out a new theater related video on every theater Thursday. Plus I do bonus uploads throughout the week. If you have any questions, comments, or you just want to hang out or see what I'm up to, cats underscore steel, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. I hope you guys are having a great day. I will see you guys next time. Break a leg and bye!